Hello and welcome back to this week's video and today we'll be looking at the strange place of Fort Nepean. When you think of World War One, it's highly likely that you have images of the Western Front or the Gallipoli Campaign first come to mind. And rightly so, as much of what we were taught in school focuses on those two particular theatres of war. Well at least in the UK it was. But today we won't be talking about the horrors of trench warfare, but instead the shores of South West Australia. Fort Nepean has the honour of having the first Allied shot of World War I, which is pretty interesting in its own right, but it also has a claim of one of the first shots of World War II as well, although it is kind of disputed, but I must say it still is rather poetic. The fort's history goes back much further than 1914 though. Nepean Point in Victoria, Australia has been used for coastal defence since 1873, when the site was first selected to defend the fledgling colony of Victoria. The first defences consisted of four 80 pounder guns. By 1890, the fort had begun being known as Australia's Gibraltar and sported four 6 inch breech loading disappearing guns, two BL 9.2 inch counter bombardment British Armstrong guns, a 4.7 inch quick firing gun, and a quick firing 14 pounder. At the turn of the century, and with the increasing tensions in Europe, the fort received a beefing up by replacing a number of its guns with something a little more potent, by replacing the 9.2 inch guns with longer 6 inch Mark 7s. These newer longer range guns were named A1 and B1 and were no laughing matter. Originally seeing service in 1899 with the British Commonwealth, these guns were capable of lobbing a 45 kilogram shell nearly 15 kilometers. Impressively, at full speed, one of these guns can fire eight rounds per minute. Now, if one of these started shouting at me, I'd most definitely sit down. This leads us up to Nepean's first claim to fame. On the 5th of August 1914, German cargo ship SS Fells tried to escape Melbourne via Port Phillip. Within minutes of being notified of the state of war between the two countries, orders were sent to Fort Nepean's commander, Lieutenant C. Morris, to stop or sink the Fells. Initially, signals to stop were ignored by the German ship until B-1 fired a single shot across her bow. And as I said earlier, I wouldn't like to be on the angry end of Nepean's guns. Taking the wise option, the ship turned around and surrendered. The Fells was later renamed HMT Burrara and was put to use as a transport ship. As a side note, the Burrara survived a collision with a French cruiser and two torpedo strikes during her service in the First World War. Sadly, she was wrecked in 1937. Now on to Nepean's second claim to fame. This one isn't as clear cut as the capture of the Fells, as the Second World War broke out in several different places around the globe, and arguably World War II didn't start in 1939 for some people if you consider the conflicts related to the war that started earlier. So because of this, it is arguable about Nepean being the first shot of World War II, but it's definitely the first shot for the war for Australia, which is still no mean feat. On the 4th of September 1939, gun A1 fired a shot at an unknown vessel just two hours after war being declared. The ship was found out to be an Australian ship named the SS Winera. Now, I'm not going to lie, this is a bit of an anticlimax, and could it even be considered a first shot when technically it was friendly fire? I'll leave that up to you, but it still has the claim of being the first shot in both world wars, however tenuous it might be. Both of these events were the only times that Nepean had fired its guns in anger, or at least in a warning shot kind of anger. Nepean's story post-war was pretty quiet as the fort's guns were earmarked for scrap in the late 1940s. However, the two historically significant A1 and B1 guns were saved and put on display at the fort for when the area became open to the public in 1988. Now, would you want to go to this fort in sunny Australia? I would, however it might be more for the weather than for the historical significance. Also, would you count the shot fired across the Winera as one of the first of World War II? Let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video, new ones are uploaded every Thursday. It would be great if you subscribed and my Twitter is on here somewhere as well. Plus, I've also got Patreon if that interests you as well. And as always, thank you very much for watching.